The Kuval Bremo on release was nothing short of a monster. It dominated the meta. Basically, you had to use the Kuval Bremo. It was that good. It was so good, it actually caused players to crash because of all the effects it could generate. Fast forward to 2023 and the Incarnate weapons are absolutely dominating the landscape. So the question becomes, is the Kuval Bremo still a good weapon? And more importantly, should I still be using it? Today, we're gonna find out just that. Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be re-diving deeper into this primary weapon. As per the usual, I'm gonna have an endgame setup and a variation on it, but we're also gonna be having a new player-friendly approach. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. Now with that out of the way, let's jump into the Kuva Bram. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped, and for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Kuva Brahma looks and plays like a traditional style bow, but there's nothing traditional about this weapon, because you see, by default, this one fires grenades, and the grenades upon contact will be detonating in 8.3 meters. Now, the grenades do have travel time, they do have drop-off, and upon that explosion, you're also gonna be getting three additional little bomblets, as you can see, flying off into the distance there, pretty much in the same way you have little bomblets for the Kuvazar, but these kind of fan out from the point of contact, and that's a bit of an issue. That said, though... I'm gonna be getting a whole lot of damage instances. First of all, the arrow making contact with a target. Second of all, the 8.3 meter explosion. Then we're gonna have the contact of the bomblets and the explosion of the little bomblets as well. So even though the status chance of the weapon is on the low side, the actual status applications will be decent simply because you have a whole lot of damage instances. The main problem in usability when it comes to the Kuval Brahma, outside of the fact that it plays like a traditional style bow, is the ammunition. You got five maximum by default, which is definitely not ideal and i know what you're gonna say dude no problem i'm gonna be dropping some ammo pads i'm gonna be doing some uh, mutations and all whatnot i'm gonna be just fine well in actual gameplay that doesn't really pan out all that well sadly especially if you're gonna be doing steel path when you are limited by how many pads you can drop so you can essentially spam pads down for ammo a few solutions would be using an arrow mutation or using something like a sentinel carrier prime and ammo case but what you need to understand is that no matter what you do no matter what mutation you use or if you use the mutation and uh, the sentinel and ammo case and everything you're only gonna be getting one ammo per ammo pack on the ground even with scavenger mods even with scavenger auras you're still getting only one so do bear that one in mind we tested essentially all the combinations possible and we're still getting only one one last thing that i did forget to point out you can manually detonate your arrows by using your secondary fire or your middle mouse button midair if that is of any worth to you so with that out of the way let's have a quick look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with mod capacity is gonna be 30 out of 30 as soon as you get your kuva brahma but to get your kuva brahma you need to choose yourself a progenitor and the progenitor will be deciding the default element on the weapon my recommendation would be toxin for maximum let's say flexibility but if you're just interested in damage 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 then you should go for heat you can make something like corrosive heat on the weapon but with toxin it's easier to make viral with a single mod if you're going to be getting viral from an outside source then it doesn't really matter all that much Accuracy 16.7 for a bow that's totally fine. Ammo maximum of 5, ammo pickup of 1, charge rate of 0, 4. Now the charge rate is on the quick side, and again, you do want to aim this one at the feet of enemies because of the huge explosion. Noise alarming 0 0.6 reload. This represents the time it takes the Warframe to pull another arrow from the quiver. Riven disposition of Nada. Essentially, Rivens are not really worth for this one because the disposition is, well, almost minimum simply because this is a fairly popular weapon. Critical chance sky high at 35% with a 2.1x critical multiplier, 21% status chance. And what you see here also applies to the little bomblets according to the wiki. So essentially the same crit, critical multiplier and status chance. Damage by default, impact and toxin. Impact, of course, the arrow making contact with your targets. As for the radial attack with a big bada boom explosion, not the little explosion from the bomblets, you got 90% damage fall off and that is brutal essentially it's the biggest damage fall off in warframe so you do have a huge explosion at 8.3 but also the damage fall off is fantastic so essentially you're only going to be getting that huge amount of damage at the epicenter of the explosion and as it fans out you're getting less and less a whole lot less so stuff like firestorm or prime firestorm becomes all the more relevant blast and toxin again toxin is here because my progenitor is toxin if i was to reroll the weapon right now i would probably go for heat now my mod capacity is 80 out of 80 keep in mind that kuva weapons do get additional capacity the more you forma and if you want to suck out all the mastery points out of a kuva brahma you gotta forma it five times and you'll reach that 80 out of 80 once you plugged in the orokin catalyst 
As for Forma, my friends, well, simply Forma for the highest drain mod that you have. For example, in case of a Riven, let's say you have a Riven like this one, the polarity will be Vazarin, I simply mod for one Vazarin. But normally, the safest bet in primary and secondary weapons is to go for mod, right? Polarities, three or four ought to do it. If you got a Riven, you gotta go to five. Now, let's check out a standard entry-level build. Damage restoration, multi shot split chamber, and vigilante armaments, critical chance and critical damage through the use of critical delay and vital sense. Now, granted, critical delay does has that minus 20% fire rate, which can make the bow a bit more sluggish in actual combat, but from 04 to 0 0.67 isn't really all that big of a deal when you have a small base a percentage base increase or decrease is not gonna have a huge impact on the weapon we got only one 60 60 mods rhyme rounds cold damage on this one combined with the default toxin is gonna be making viral and this is the simplest and most straightforward way in the excellent slot i urge you to use arrow mutation it's not the only mutation you can use on this one you can use prime snapper ammo mutation will be fine you can use vigilante supplies as well or you can use the sentinel you see, if you're going to be using the Sentinel, what the Sentinel's ammo case does is essentially overwrite your arrow mutation or whatever mutation you have on the weapon, and I will demonstrate that just a tad later. So it's pointless to use one and the other. You should use one or the other. Let me demonstrate that with a quick test. Oh, the final slot. Plug into this one, whatever you feel comfortable with. This is your quote-unquote flex slot. If you prefer more fire rate or another element or anything of the sort, definitely go for it. Though, if you do go for another element, keep in mind that the full toxin is always considered a last mod slot somewhere around here. So it might mess with your elemental combination. I'm going to be recommending a mod for newer players that I have never ever recommended. And I thought that I would never ever recommend. And that one is Ammo Drum is a meme mod in warframe ammo drum is what you offer in trades that you're basically getting something for free you get yourself nine ammo instead of five it makes a world of a difference in actual gameplay i recommend at least while you're getting to grips with the weapon so you don't get pissed off because of that five maximum ammo you try ammo drum 120 corrupted heavy goons basically these are some pretty high level targets they're above sortie free and for a normal level build i think this is more than plenty again i aim for the feet i'm not going for headshots or anything of the sort and you can see the destructive power of this weapon absolutely bloody beautiful glorious fantastic as for my ammunition still stuck currently at nine because again in terms of usability the only thing you need to worry about with this one is not aiming or anything of the sort you just gotta worry about your ammo picked up the ammo i'm back to five as for performance for a standard level build with ammo drum on this is more than respectable and you should be able to clear the entire star chart and sortie and everything without any issue using the kuva brahma and this concludes the new player portion of the guide if you're more of a veteran and you have the mods and you have the knowledge and expertise you should be looking at something like this this is one version of the end game build we're gonna have another one that relies heavily on synergy essentially this one still makes use of the built-in toxin on the weapon to make viral with prime prior runs prime firestorm the 44 percent blast radius helps out a lot my blast radius goes to 12 meters from 8.3 and again i do have that 90 percent damage drop off which is beyond annoying galvanized chamber and a bane mod as before if you do not enjoy bane mods you can swap this one out with something like more multi-shot you can add another element if you want to i wouldn't go past one flat damage mod at this point because you also got primary merciless that also gives you a whole lot of flat damage we're gonna be testing out the weapon like so we're gonna be using carrier for ammo case and that's gonna be giving us one more magazine capacity so we're gonna be going to six plus the uh mutation part the only problem with the mutation part from ammo case is the fact that it takes a couple of seconds for it to actually convert the ammo. Outside of that, basically, for the Kuva Brahma, it works the same as any other mutation. You're just going to be getting one back. As for the damage of the build, I mean, what more do you want? That's it. These are level 165 corrupted heavy goons with these steel path modifiers on, and you are absolutely wrecking house. There's no problem whatsoever in taking out these high level targets like so. Look at that. What we're going to be doing next is showcasing the fact that ammo case overrides any ammo mutation you have on the weapon. Right now on the weapon there is no ammo mutation whatsoever. We're going to be killing something from a distance and then I'm going to be picking up the ammo so you can see exactly what happens. There we go. So if you take a look there's a whole bunch of ammo there and you can easily teleport these ammo packs which are primary which are secondary by the little lights they have. The purple ones with this kind of shape are the ones that are primary and these are the ones that are secondary yes i'm gonna get close and now it should start sucking right about now look at that boom 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 two bow ammo over there 
one bow ammo if i get close to the secondary one wait for it one two three now one primary ammo and you see that little icon that looks something like this that showcases the fact that ammo has been converted that was secondary ammo converted to primary ammo by ammo case yes more secondary ammo here one two three i think as though three four i see four wait let's get rid of some ammo because otherwise you're not gonna see it okay we are on one we're gonna get close to those four secondary ammos that we got two two three converted one per each another two two three converted one for primary over there one bow ammo and that should be one more bow ammo as well as you may get rid of this there you go this was ammo case entirely that was just ammo case working and you can always tell ammo case by that delay the only problem again quote unquote problem is the fact that ammo case has that two second delay now if i'm gonna be putting on zero mutation uh, sniper mutation that also works whatever you want it's fine uh let's put let's put out a mutation just to make sure that some of you guys might believe that prime sniper ammo mutation doesn't work yes it does work just fine for it we're gonna be repeating that test as before the way you can see it is the fact that you get your uh you get your ammunition back instantaneously with these mutations you don't have that two seconds delay right so we're gonna be taking off carrier we have the mutation on and then we're gonna be doing with mutation and with carrier yes all right, we are at zero ammo right now. And what you see on the ground right now, this is a primary. This is a secondary ammo. If I get close to them, instantly back. You see that? One primary ammo converted instantly and one bow ammo from the uh, primary. If I get close, two more bow ammo. And for the secondary was converted into primary instantaneously. So as you saw there, per each ammo pack, you only get one. Per each ammo pack, you only get one even with a scavenger on you saw how ammo mutation works so we're going to be equipping the sentinel now yes with ammo case and what ammo case will do is basically overwrite everything and it's going to be the only one that functions so in the order of which mods apply apparently ammo case trumps what you have in your excel slot and we are on zero now okay right in front of us you're going to see one two well there's a lot of secondary ammo let's get close to it that's the secondary ammo to free the delay right there from ammo case and again to free that delay from ammo case so that's what happens essentially yes and you also have a primary one here you see that that's primary ammo right here we're gonna get close to it it's gonna instantly convert look at that instantly convert and then after delay the secondary ammo and one more secondary and primary ammo right now you're not getting more than one you get it yes that's how it works you're not getting more than one no matter what you do essentially the only way to like increase the usability is for something like ammo drum or other similar effects welcome to steel path my friends i'm gonna show you around from the get-go this is survival against the corrupted keep an eye on the ammo because basically that's the thing outside of that the damage that the weapon deals is gonna be able to like completely destroy whatever stands before you so it's not a question of damage with the Brahma, it never has been. It's a question of uh, ammo, ever since the ammo nerf, sadly. Now it's less affected than the Tsar, but still, there are certain moments when you do run out of ammo. It's not gonna be now, though. I mean, take a look at this. You are essentially annihilating Steel Path. The problem with nerfs is that every single time Digital Extremes nerfs something, even if they overdo it or not overdo it, the community reacts like, Oh my god, that weapon is destroyed, it can't be used anymore, it's fucking horrible and all whatnot. Which is not always the case. The Brahma is still an extremely powerful weapon. And granted, it may not compete with some of the more newer incarnate weapons, because there are, those are on a separate level, a very special level of their own, but that does not mean you can't use this weapon to completely annihilate the entire game, at whatever level you wish. I don't know if you noticed, but for Citrine, I'm only really using my two to survive and my one from time to time, and that's it. At this level, I don't need more than that, but obviously, I can fork out a whole lot more if I put my three down. This is how you should play. Boom. Citrine is an absolutely amazing Warframe. She has become my main support-ish kind of Warframe. Taking the spot of Wisp, I highly recommend you guys check her out. And if you don't know what she's all about, or if you overlooked her, or are sleeping on her, link the cards right now for a full and detailed build guide for the lovely Citrine. As for combat here, I mean, what else can I show you? Oh, I know, an Acolyte fight, right? Can't get headshot multi because it's AoE. Yes, you're right. It can get headshot though. 
So if it can get headshot, then it can trigger longbow sharp shot. I know that for a fact because I tested it. You get the X4 damage multiplier. Is that an acolyte? I think I saw a flash. I mean, I'm not even gonna move from this place. I'm just gonna wait for him, her here. There we go. We got Torment. I don't think Torment is the bubble guy. Here is Torment, or I think it's there. Are you there? Yeah, it's there somewhere. It got hit, like destroyed. Look at that. And I didn't even freeze him. If you are Citrine and you're not placing your four when an acolyte comes, you're doing it wrong. Now let's say you want a more synergistic build. Before we go any further, we are going to be talking a little bit about Arcanes. Longbow, sharp shot. Does it work? Yes, it works. Explosions don't have the headshot multiplier, but they can proc multi-shot or headshot effects, better said. Yes. So even though you have a big battle boom explosion that is not going to get a benefit from the headshot multiplier, it doesn't mean you can proc its effect. You're still getting that X4 damage out of this one. But in actual gameplay, it means you're consistently going for headshots, trying to get that X4 up as often as you can. You can go for this one if you want to, but I don't feel this is the gameplay style that advantages the Brahma. What we're going to be doing is, well, we're going to go for Primary Frostbite. This one is going to give you critical damage and multi-shot. And then we're going to be dropping a couple of things. Essentially, what I'm going for is a corrosive and cold up approach so I can make use out of Primary Frostbite. Obviously, that means I'm going to have to get Vital from an outside source. I can use a Panzer Volpophila, I can use a Secondary Epitaph or whatever primary you prefer, or I can use something like Grendel's ability. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Uh, we got to sacrifice the mod. We're going to be sacrificing the Bane mod and Firestorm. We need the flat damage because we don't have any other source of flat damage on the build right now. And because my weapon has default toxin, I need to use two mods to make corrosive and then have the cold outside. So it's going to be something like this. Obviously, for a raw strength approach, you should be going for uh, the 90 mods. Add a mutation in case you're not going to be using a sentinel. And I am going to be using a sentinel so I can de-equip this one. And instead, I can go for something like projectile flight speed, like terminal velocity, for example. As for the viral application, this time we're going to be relying on Grendel's ability. That fantastic and popular Nourish. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Dude, I love this gun. Well, it's not a gun, it's a bow, but still. Corrosive and cold. Corrosive and gold is gonna be working fantastically well. But you should keep track of your cold procs, yes? It's gonna take a little while to build up. 12. 13. I need more density, D. 16. 20. 25. 33 Ammo does not give a single solitary fuck just want to point that out still stays comfortably at six As for my cold procs up to 40 now, and we've been starting the mission for I don't know 30 seconds 45 seconds something like that Flash flash it's Santa Come here Santa. I got a kebab stick for you on the end of my explosive arrow I'm just gonna stay here so I get him trapped in the corridor. Violence? Is that what? That was violence! I have single-handedly annihilated violence with uh, violence. Alright, <laughs> my friends, I think I think that's pretty much gonna do it. It's time to draw some conclusions on the Kuva Brahma. There's a couple of takeaways which I need you guys to take note of, or it's optimal to take note of. First of all, no matter what you do, after a single ammo pack off the ground, you're gonna be getting a single ammo in your Kuva Brahma. You can use a scavenger. You can double down on ammo mutations if you want to. Keep in mind that if you're gonna be using the Sentinel with ammo case, ammo case overrides your Excel slot for some reason, yes? So basically, all you really need is the Sentinel with ammo case and you should be good to go. That's one takeaway. Another takeaway is the fact that a lot of players consider the Kuva Brahma now a weak weapon. That is false. That can't be further from the tooth. This is still a fantastic, strong hitting end game weapon that I highly recommend to this day. Is it as good as it once was? Don't be silly. Kuva Brahma on launch was insanity. It's still insanity, just less insanity. But if you're looking for something with a bit more ease of use, click the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on the... Well, you're gonna have to click and see. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, my name is Malazar, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.